Hello and welcome to the first Industrial Minerals newscast of 2013, bringing you the latest digest of industry news. Coming up. The US Environmental Protection Agency provides an update on its fracking report. Linus Corporation announces lamp production schedule. And Chinese flake graphite prices show signs of recovery. The US Environmental Protection Agency has published an update on its fracking study, which has been described as one of the most aggressive public outreach programs in EPA history. The report examines several stages of the fracking process, including water acquisition, chemical mixing, well injection, flowback and produced water, and wastewater treatment and waste disposal. While the report offers some clarity for environmental groups opposing fracking in the US, it still faces some criticism, and concerns have been raised over the likely absence of evidence to support the probability of groundwater contamination in the final report, after the agency failed to find a company to partner with to test groundwater around a drilling site. EPA is now likely to rely on computer-generated simulations of water contamination, which environmentalists say just isn't enough. The final report is due to be published in a draft for public and peer review in 2014. Don't forget there's still time to register for a place at Oilfield Minerals Outlook Middle East. The venue and dates information is on the website. Sources in China have reported minor increases in flake graphite prices as the market makes a slow start to 2013. Chinese prices fell in line with the rest of the industry in the second half of 2012, with prices in the Heilongjiang province falling by up to 25% between October and November alone. A production decrease at the start of 2013 caused by the annual winter shutdown of mines is now pushing prices up slightly. The total volume of flake graphite exported from China in November 2012 is estimated to be around 14,000 tonnes, with a total value of nearly 11.5 million US. Dollars. This figure is 10.5% lower than in 2011, according to information compiled by industrial mineral sister site IM Data. Flake graphite has also been in the news this week due to a major mineral smuggling scam that has been uncovered in Inner Mongolia. Manzuli Customs officials revealed at the end of December they'd uncovered an operation to smuggle large quantities of flake graphite out of the country by reporting lower than actual export prices. By reporting prices far below the market value of the material, the unnamed Chinese company evaded tax totaling $78,000 on exports of more than 2,000 tonnes of flake graphite worth around 1.8 million US. Two suspects have been arrested and have confessed to charges of tax evasion. Meanwhile, in December, the Chinese economy reached its highest level since May last year, news that is likely to encourage demand for the many industrial minerals used in manufacturing. According to the HSBC Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index, levels rose to 51.5 in December, up from 50.5 in November, indicating the fourth consecutive month of economic improvement for the manufacturing industry. Markets research recorded a reduced PMI of 46.1 for the Eurozone, which saw its levels drop for the 17th consecutive month, while the UK saw manufacturing expanding to a measure of 51.4 in order to reach its 50 15-month high. This week, China has also set the first of two rare earth production quotas for 2013 at 46,900 tonnes. The figure is about half the total quota set last year, according to a Ministry of Land and Resources statement. The ministry did not make the total 2012 production quota public, but the statement suggests it was slightly more from the figure of 2011, which stood at 93,800 tonnes. Output quotas for the rest of 2013 are expected to be announced in the second quarter of this year. Continuing with Rare Earths news, Australian miner Linus Corporation has announced that it expects to begin producing saleable Rare Earths products in the next few weeks following the commissioning of the cracking and leaching units at the company's controversial advanced materials plant, LAMP, in Malaysia. The company issued this statement. Our process of cracking rare earths concentrate through kilns before passing it through a leaching circuit has successfully and safely produced a mixed rare earth sulphate containing more than 90% rare earth oxides. 
The mixed sulphate is now being fed into the facility's solvent extraction units to produce individual rare earth products, which will be available for sale in a few weeks, with production scheduled to be ramped up to a full 22,000 tonne per annum capacity over the next three months. And finally, a US company has overcome the problem of expensive transportation costs associated with frac sand by utilising a stretch of abandoned railway. In partnership with the Canadian National Railway Company, Superior Silica Sands will now be able to easily transport frac sand from its 2.4 million tonnes per annum facility. The Canadian National Railway Company has invested $35 million in the project, restoring nearly 40 miles of track between Ladysmith and Barron in the state of Wisconsin. Now, a final reminder, there is still time to register for a place at Oilfield Minerals Outlook Middle East. The venue and dates information is on the website. That's all we have time for this week. If you have any comments or feedback, we'd love to hear from you. You can get in touch via Twitter at IndMin or contact us through the website www.indmin.com. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.